Hello, my name is Savina Selvin and I'm a speech language pathologist here at Pennsylvania School for the Deaf, where I work in the main building with students ranging from kindergarten through high school. I'm a part of the speech language communication team, which consists of eight wonderful therapists. I am here to introduce my team and to share with you a little bit about what we do. Some of you might already be familiar with what we do here to support your students. Others may be wondering why their deaf child receives speech and language services. So I'm here to answer your questions and to share a few fun facts about us. So what do we focus on as the team? Generally speaking, as speech language pathologists within an educational setting, we provide services in the areas of language, augmentative and alternative communication, listening skills, and speech. So everything that we target falls under that speech language communication umbrella. So what exactly does that entail? So maybe you're wondering why your deaf child receives speech language services, even if they don't use their voice to communicate. It's because we also support language. So in regards to language, how do we support your students so that they can better access their curriculum? Now understand we are not teachers. We are related service staff members and we help our students fill in any gaps in language. So language consists of three areas. We have expressive language, receptive language, and pragmatic language. Expressive language is one's ability to use language to express himself. Now this can range from pointing and gesturing for basic wants and needs to using a language fluently, like American Sign Language or English. Now receptive language is the ability to receive and to understand language. So in everyday life that looks like following daily routines, for example, get your backpack, ranging all the way to understanding classroom lectures in American Sign Language. Now the third area is pragmatic language. And this refers to social language skills that are used in daily interactions with others. This includes when, how, and why we use language to communicate. This can range from making eye contact, to greeting people, to joking around with friends, and to understanding body language and conversation. AAC stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication, which is another way to communicate when traditional language forms are not fully meeting a student's needs. Now understand AAC is an umbrella term that includes a variety of supports. While some supports are high tech, others may be no tech. High tech, as the name suggests, means that an electronic device is used for advanced technology. These systems include speech generating devices such as the NovaChat and communication apps such as Go. On these systems, a student selects a word or picture to state their message. Note text systems do not use electronics. This includes drawing, spelling words by pointing to letters, or pointing to words or pictures on a page. Now you might see a picture exchange communication system. A popular one is PEX, where a child gives you a picture to make a request. When appropriate, we also focus on improving listening skills. Auditory development is a range, is a hierarchy of skills that ranges from teaching students how to be aware of their environmental sounds within their community to understanding what another person is saying. Now, it is important to note that students benefit and use their amplification devices differently. We are so fortunate here to have two incredible audiologists here at Pennsylvania School for the Deaf. They are the experts and leaders regarding listening technology and we are fortunate enough to work closely with them daily. Now, along with the audiologists, we provide education, both before and after receiving amplification devices. We help set up expectations for the outcomes and teach them how to use their devices. As a team, we support students using their equipment by providing listening checks, monitoring for changes of the hearing level, and ensuring that the equipment is clean and working properly. Speech consists of articulation, phonology, oral motor, voice, and fluency. Articulation is how we make speech sounds using our tongue, mouth, and lips. We may give your child the cue of putting their lips together to make the sound p for the letter P. Phonology is the rules and patterns of how sounds influence each other in words and sentences. So for example, in spoken English, the plural S sounds differently 
depending on the word. So for example, the S in dogs sounds like a Z, Z. The S in cups, cups, sounds like the S for S. Oral motor is when we look into your child's mouth to assure that all the structures are present and working properly. Voice is how we use our breath and vocal cords to produce speech. Now, for example, we teach the difference between the sound for the letters B and P. They are produced in exactly the same way, except B, B, your voice is on, and P, P, your voice is off. Now, fluency is how smooth our sounds and words come out. For example, a student may present with a stutter, like I wo, 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 want a cookie. The time and place of services depends on each individual student. Services, services can be provided one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. Therapy can take place in the clinician's office, interiored within the classroom, or co-teaching within the classroom. Length of time and frequency varies on the individual student. This is discussed annually at your child's IEP meeting. We also consult with the IEP team by providing strategies and ways to support the student in class. So what does therapy look like? Therapy looks like playing, sitting at the table, working on the floor, at the playground, on Google Classroom, during snack time, during social break, during lunch, or even during specials. We strive to create a positive learning environment for our children. Optimal therapy outcomes happen when a student is engaged and motivated. We want to ensure that your child is able to carry over their newly learned skills across all areas of life, not just within the therapy room. Our team consists of eight wonderful women. Donna is the lead speech language pathologist who works in the main building along with Dahlia, Ali, Sandy, Jess Zarenko, and myself, Sabina. Jess Doherty and Kim can be found in the Early Childhood Center working with our youngest children. For more information about these terms, please visit the American Speech Language Hearing Association website at www.asha.org or reach out to your child's speech language communication therapist if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you so much for your time today.